Hello and welcome to my SharePoint branding and design video blog. My name is Eric Swenson and you can follow me on Twitter at Eric J. Swenson or on my blog at ericswenson.blogspot.com. In this session, I'm going to cover some new features in SharePoint 2013 around display templates. Let's get started. Here's an example wireframe that we'll be using as a basis for our design. So we'll start off with a header, a left navigation, and a page title. We'll add in an image rotator, some body content, uh, documents, blog posts, and tasks. And here's the end result of what we're going to be building. You've got your image rotator, description, documents, blog posts, and tasks. The first step in this process is to create a new page. Under your site actions, click on create a page. Give it a name. Create. And ahead of time, I created a custom page layout. I'll show you that example here. So this custom blog demo, um, if I edit this in advanced mode, basically I have a left column area. I have a right column area where my publishing content, web part zone in here. And then I have three web part zones down below. I did have to add a uh, display in line for this one left column um, with a rotator. For some reason, it was pushing the content down. So this display in line uh, kept it so that the content can move up. So we go back to the page here. Under page, we'll choose my page layout. And right here, custom blog demo. And you can see I have my left zone here, my page content, my three web parts on the bottom. The first thing that we want to do is add in the image rotator. I'm going to click on add a web part. Under content rollup, we have this new web part called content search. I'll click add. You'll see that it displays uh, just some random information here. So if you're familiar with the content query web part, it's ver it acts very similar. So what I'll do is edit the web part. Now you have this change query here. So you'll click on change query. And this is a few settings here. So under the first settings, which is your query, we're going to look for images. So I have pictures right here. So documents will give a result set for all documents. And what's nice is it actually give you a, a preview result set of what you've chosen. So the next one that's really powerful is a specific content type. So here it's saying don't restrict any content type. I can go in here and say just show me article pages. Um, and then you actually down at the bottom it says show all content types. I have a whole list of all these content types that are available to me. So for example, if I just wanted to show image, these are all the different images that I can choose, right? So at this point, I can then do a refiner if I really wanted to, to only refine based on a specific author or um, based on a specific site. So there's a lot of different flexibility here. So I'm pretty good with that. So I'll click on OK. Now at this point, what, since you've changed the query, you'll need to hit apply. And I'll have my images here. Now it only is bringing back three and on my wireframe I had four. So I'll change that to four, hit apply. And now I have my four images. Now at this point, um, we can then start looking at the different control templates. So this first one is a list. Now, if you have list with paging, you'll see that it adds a little control here. The next one is slideshow. Now, slideshow is a little bit different. It adds an uh, ability to sort of rotate them around. Now, at this point, 
the the item template is really what's uh, important here. So if you choose large picture, this is sort of the the design that we're a little, we're looking for. So you can change how many items to show, um, and then the next property is to set, you know, you have the title here, the image, and it rotates, but we want to add more information here. So what we're going to do is change the mapping of the manage property. So we're pulling in the URL, the title, and the description doesn't really fit for an image. So what we're going to do is actually look for a size. So the size of the image, and we have all of these properties that we can choose from. And we'll look for size. Then when done, just hit OK. And you can see my image is here, and I also have the, the size. The next thing I'll do is add in my content. So I'm going to click on here, paste in some, just some warm up some content here, and make a few little style changes. And we're pretty good to go there. All right, the next web part that we want to add in is the documents web part. So what we'll do is we'll click to add a web part here. Again, we're going to use the content rollup, content search. We're going to click add. All right, and so again, it comes up with a generic uh, display. I'm going to edit the web part. I'm going to change the query. Set this to documents. Now, another cool thing about the refiners is if I choose documents in the system, you'll see I have Excel, Word, and PowerPoint. If I just want to limit just to Word documents, I can click on refiners. And down here, under file extension, I can choose DOCX. Click add. And you'll see my refinement is now only to Word documents. I could change this to Word and uh, something else, um, that sort of thing. So. And when I'm done, simply hit OK. And here, maybe I'll change it to uh, yeah, 4. So if I hit Apply, I'll have all my Word documents, but I don't really like this really large uh, image. It really provides no uh, detail. It just takes up a lot of space. So what I'll want to do is um, I, if I wanted to have the paging, I could do list with paging. The next one is, um, there's this two lines. What this does is it provides the ability to have two lines of um, properties right next to the icon. So if I hit apply, you'll see I have my Word document icon. And actually what's kind of nice is as you click through, you don't have to hit apply every time. It just kind of does it for you. So. Um, the next thing is when you go to choose a property, say for this, you have your title. Um, it's probably important to know when that document was last modified. Uh, so in here, I will choose under M. All right, so you have your modified date. Now here I do have to hit apply once I choose a different metadata. So I'll hit apply. Scroll down, you'll see when these things were last modified. Now the one thing that it doesn't show is like, of course you have the label that says what this date is. So some people might be think this is the last created date modified. So that's one sort of limitation there. It, it doesn't sort of give you that label, but um, the other thing that this uh, search web part, um, search query web part does is by default, it doesn't show the title. So if I was to um, publish this page here, you'll see that by default, the web part title um, is not visible. So what we'll do is edit this page, simply modify this web part. Under title, change this to documents. And also you need to change the Chrome type uh, from none to title only.
right? So now we're pretty good with documents. Now we're going to add in our blog posts. So I'm going to click on add a web part, content rollup, uh, content search, add, add the web part. And for this uh, search query, what we're going to do is we're going to change it to uh, a specific content type. And what we're going to look for is posts uh, for the blog posts. And you can see I have my posts here. Hit OK. And I'm going to put uh, five here. Change this to two lines. And then I'm going to set my properties. In this example, we're going to go down to publish date. So when it was last published. We're going to change the appearance, change this to blog, and then set this to title only. All right, and there we got ours. And this last one is going to be tasks. So we're going to add in a content search. Change the query. Now this one does have um, by a specific content type. Again, what we're going to do is choose tasks. See how the task here. Click OK. And for this one, what we're going to do is have it list with paging, two lines. And for the properties, we're going to actually apply the third line, the second line to the assigned to. And hit apply. And you can see that we have all these tasks and who the task is assigned to. Um, we could also, if we wanted to, put you know, things like percent complete. Hit apply. And we can get stats on how, how, how much percent uh, a certain task is complete. So again, we'll have to change the appearance and change the title. Hit okay. And then when we're done, simply publish the page. And you can see how this looks. The last step is to actually customize your own display template. So in this example, right now we have a task with just a title and a percent. Say we wanted to add more properties than just two. What we're going to do is actually we're going to open up SharePoint Designer. We're going to navigate to all files, catalogs, master page, display templates, and then content web parts. This is a list of all your list templates and display templates. So in our example, we were using the item two lines. What we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste. And then we're going to rename this one. to three lines. Right, I'm going to hit refresh. What you got to do is wait for this little check mark to come out here. And that means that it's available for checking out. All right now, when I click right click, choose checkout. Let's see how my two checks. And notice we're editing the HTML file, not the JavaScript file. Edit advanced mode. 
Now the title is what's going to show up in the drop down. So I'm going to put three titles. Demo. Now the important thing here is that we want to make sure that we add in our property mapping. So right now there's, um, you'll see here, there's a line one and there's a line two. So you're going to start off at the colon, copy all the way to the next colon here, copy that, paste. What we're going to do is we're going to type in the line three. So we're going to have one more line here and you can add another one for uh, four properties. We're just going to do three. Scroll down. We can change this to three lines. To three. And this is going to be the unique ID. So we don't want it to be the same as the, the two in case we had two on the same page. Now this is where you start adding in your uh, lines to get your values. Line three. And then for a unique ID, um, you can uh, create another one, copy this, and this will give it a unique ID for the third line. All right, now down here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just simply copy this. We're gonna paste it down here. We're going to change this to line three. And we're going to change all of these. We're going to leave this to the, the class name to line two. I think that's specific to that look and feel. But we'll change these. All right, and I think we're done here. Hit save. Go into our here and check it in. Publish as a major version. All right, now if we go into the page and edit the page, modify this task. Now in our drop down, we have our three titles demo. Choose property mappings, and now we'll see that we have three. Now, if I change this to the two, you'll see only two lines are here. If I change it to three, I now have one additional line. So here, I could actually change this to be assigned to, and then maybe this would be the due date. Hit OK. Publish my page. And if I scroll down, I can see the task who is assigned to, and then also the due date. And that completes this session.